when Dwayne Johnson sat across the table from me when we first met, you know, a little over 11 years ago, right, around the time we did, and I asked what his goal, what goal was, and like you said, he was coming off of a, a tough run of movies. He said, I want to be the biggest star in the world. I want world domination, you know, complete global domination, which he said with a smile, oh, but, not kidding, right? but, but that was the word is global domination. And that was not a joke. He meant it. I'm Amy Jo Martin. Welcome to the Why Not Now show. You know that thing you've been thinking about doing? Yeah, that one. Why not now? Have you ever actually taken the time to ask yourself, what's stopping me? Let's talk it through. This is your chance to give that idea the attention it deserves and take action. Each episode, I have a chat with a fascinating person from entrepreneurs to athletes, celebrities, my parents, rocket scientists, and all walks of life. We talk through a critical time when they've asked themselves, why not now? We dissect that day or even that moment, step by step. Today we have Brad Slater on the show. And actually we recorded this conversation live on stage together. Brad is one of the top Hollywood agents uh, in America, in the world. And he represents some of the biggest names out there that you've all heard of. He is a partner at William Morris Endeavor. And I have known Brad for a good, gosh, 12, 13 years. We have grown together. We have learned together. I have learned so much from him personally and professionally. I am going to spare you more context and just let us hop right in here. What I can say is that Brad is an example of someone who has been able to really look at where his passion, purpose, and skill collide, live in that intersection, because that's where bliss resides, and leverage the shit out of it. What do I mean by that? He is surrounded by so much influence. He has so much influence himself in Hollywood and entertainment and he uses it for good daily. And he is a pure renegade from head to toe. You will hear he's the most unexpected (laughs) type of Hollywood agent you can meet. So without further ado, here is my friend, Brad Slater. Brad Slater in the house. This is awesome. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm thrilled to be here. I was so honored by the invite. We've known each other for a very long time, 11 or 12 years, I think, at this point. So um, so this is incredible. What an incredible group of, of women. And, and I've been reading all about all the businesses that you guys have, and it's super inspiring. So I... Uh, I don't know. I'm nervous, so hopefully you'll be okay. <laughs> nervous It'll being be okay. You guys. We're, we, I know we're intimidating. <laughs> um, okay, let's start off like we usually do. No reason to be nervous. Can you tell me about a time when you had a big decision to make and you had to ask yourself, "Why not now?" Yeah, I mean that's an easy one for me. I uh, I think I used the word "never" 500 times about ever becoming an agent. Um, I grew up in Los Angeles. I had no ties to the entertainment business, weirdly. Um, I knew a lot of kids who were actors and parents were actors, but I didn't have any, any opportunity to f- you know, have a mother or father or aunt or uncle make a call to get me into a mailroom somewhere. I kind of found my way. Um, I, I did start in the foreign distribution business, that's true. And, but once I got into representation, I went onto the managerial side of the business. I was a, I was, I was a manager. And, um, and that's really rare. Usually you can go from agent and then you've done your time as an agent and you go to manager. Very few. I can't even think of any others who went from manager to agent. And everybody told me not to be an agent, not to go to William Morris. And I loved it. I'm like, <laughs> I'm going to do the exact opposite of what you all are telling me, which is something I think I've done my entire, my entire career. And so that was a big step. I wasn't trained as an agent. 
I knew I was going to be a super untraditional agent. In fact, I almost cost myself the job when I was interviewing with, with the whole old guard at William Morris because I said I will be the most untraditional agent you've ever had. And if you know anything about William Morris at all, it's the, the old William Morris, not what we are now. Before the you know, uh, pre-merger, it's the most traditional place you could ever be. It was the New York Yankees you know, or the Rockefeller of agencies. So to, for these guys to hear this punk come in and say, I'm going to be the most untraditional agent ever, they called my lawyer and said, well, he made a comment that he's going to be the most untraditional agent we've ever had. Like, what does that mean? It's and my called lawyer a renegade. Called me, he's like, did you say that? And I was like, yeah, I did. <laughs> and somehow I got through. And that was 20 years ago almost to the day. So when everybody told me don't do it, my why not now moment was we're doing it. Let's go and we'll, Let's go. we'll see what happens. So I, I just had this flashback. I think the first time ever I was in your office and I've got my laptop and I'm like, there's the social media stuff, Brad, and it's a big deal. And let's get DJ going on it. And most agents at the time were threatened by that because they didn't know what it was, how to harness it. To have your client speak directly to the world without a filter or some sort of stopgap was very scary. But Brad was different. And so that innovative mindset and renegade mentality is baked deep. Um, you have an ability to spot talent. That X factor, that's your job. What's your X factor? I think for me, you know, I, I joke all, I went to the, the better school in Arizona. Oh my God, University we're already Arizona. here. She How went to Arizona minutes State. In, and we're t- so already that's going the only, there. That's the only thing that I have on Amy is I just went to a better institution. Other than that, she's got me in every category. So boring, Tucson, <laughs> right? Yeah. Phoenix. Like, you guys been Tucson. to Phoenix lately? Just kidding, I love it. Um, and, um, and so, you know, Ugh. I knew that I was going to be around people who could buy and sell my, my education, where I came from, and the way I was raised. And 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 there were going to be people who probably saw even more movies than I did. Although I feel like I've seen a lot. Um, if I wasn't on a baseball field growing up, all I was doing was watching movies and, and television. Um, but I had to find, I had to have something that would be my X factor. And for me, it was always going to be passion and grind. And I don't, you know, for me, I, I just don't believe that anybody's going to outpassion me. And I don't think anybody's going to out-hustle me. Someone probably will, and, and that's great. But in my head, <laughs> trust me when I tell you, no one's going to work harder than me, and no one's going to get more excited about whatever it is that I'm selling that day than I am. And so that had to be, I had to have my thing, because there are some unbelievably talented people around me around every corner, and there's always somebody you know, who has an edge on you, and I never really was going to consider that. Um, and so I, you know, I think... Kat and Sloan can both tell you when it comes to, you know, excitement, although Sloan might have me beat. I don't know. She, she outpassioned she, and hustled. She might. She um, is. You know, but that's, that's my thing. And, and I fight really, really, really hard for the people I represent um, because I believe in them probably as much as I believe in myself, if not more. So, so yeah, I'd say those are my things. You know what's really fascinating about that? So the hardest working human I've ever met is Dwayne Johnson, actually. And so for your, the, the magnet that you are to attract the talent that you do, and then also spot and identify, but he was not who he is now in terms of brand size when you started working with them. What is the biggest difference between people who have that level of fame and people who don't? What is the one thing? Well, first of all, I think that the people who don't might get there which is super exciting to, to look at. And I've you know, been lucky enough to, to be some of those. But I, I know the question you're asking is really, I think, I think that when they look in the mirror, they see exactly who they think they see. You know what I mean? I think there's a lot of people out there in the, in the business world, uh, certainly in the celebrity world, in the athletics, who walk a, you know, talk a good talk, but don't walk it. And when they look in the mirror, they see something completely different than, than what they portray and the ones who re- like they believe when Dwayne Johnson sat across the table from me when we first met you know a little over 11 years ago right now time we did and I asked what his goal what goal was and like you said he was coming off of a, a tough run of movies he said I want to be the biggest star in the world I want world domination you know complete global domination which he said with a smile oh, but, not kidding right? but but that was the word is global domination and that was not a joke he meant it and we looked at each other and said you know what um, I don't know how we're going to get there, but that's exactly where we're going to go. And not for me to say, but, um, but and here we are, but that's, that's it. Like there is such a belief. There's such an 
undying just attack on doing everything you have to do without skipping a day, without skipping a second. Um, and I think that that's really the difference. And I've, I've been fortunate enough to be around some of them and, and then watch from the sidelines and admire you know, many others. But, but there's, there's a work ethic and a true belief. Like they really believe that, that's hard. You know when you wake up in the morning, you go and you put on a great outfit and you feel good about yourself and you walk out the door, but then maybe like eight minutes later you get in and you're like, <sighs> they feel like Superman and women all day long. And that's a big, that's a gift. So Tate, let's take this over to the business side a little bit further. You are a magician when it comes to sales. You, you're a sales like just wizard um, from The Gap. Did you work at The Gap? I was a stock boy at The Gap. Yeah, yeah. To I was damn good at it. <laughs> I, never, I never saw the light of day on the floor. I never got to sell anything. We have I just put Gap everything out that you might have bought. That was me. <laughs> All the way to the, the projects that you're working on and the deals that you're doing. Give us some insight on how you approach negotiating and, and sales. Sales. And you, I don't mean like sales. No, no, no. You know what selling, I mean. Like, selling yourself, selling yeah, yeah. your brand, I, selling your... Listen, for, on behalf of the clients that I represent, I was so lucky. Years ago, our company, when we were much smaller, did an event you know, similar to this. Um, and, uh, and we were fortunate enough to have Lady Gaga come and, and play for us. And she was when she was doing her album with Tony Bennett. You remember that? And so she and Tony Bennett came and played for like in a room this big. It was pretty amazing. And then after Lady Gaga, uh, the Foo Fighters played for us. And it was the most amazing night. And I'm thinking like, what an incredible company that I get to work at that does this for, you know, for the people that work here. And um, it was a really cool little club. It was here. It was the Belly Up in, uh, in San Diego, right? And so there's, if you've been there, there's like a, um, a balcony. And I noticed that when everybody was watching the Foo Fighters, for some reason I looked up and Lady Gaga was sitting by herself, looking down, watching them, and they played for like three hours. And she stayed the whole time, but no one knew she was there. And I was like, that's amazing. She must really like the Foo Fighters. And, um, <laughs> and so the next day she came and did a, a panel for us like this, and she made a comment. Somebody I think asked her a similar question that you just asked me. And she said something I think that changed my, my, rep my thought of representation forever, which was, how dare you represent somebody that you're not a fan of, right? Like, and she said in the coolest way, but she's so right. And when you're an agent coming up, you don't get the choice sometimes. They assign you, hey, here's your client. Have at it, here you go, represent this person. Hasn't done a movie in 10 years, good luck. You know, that, that happens and that's how you learn. That's, you know, and, um, and you, you try so hard to get to a place where you can even have the opportunity to pick who you get to spend your time working for every single day. But that line was everything. I'm a fan of The Rock, trust me. I was watching The Rock wrestle when I was, you know, coming out of college and I remember the first time I heard he was coming to the Staples Center. Sorry, it wasn't. It was the Forum at the time. Staples Center wasn't even built, and I'm like, we went and saw him wrestle. And LeBron James, you know, I get to represent he and his business partner Maverick Carter. And I went and saw LeBron play in high school when they came to LA to Poly Pavilion. And you know, Michael Strahan was on the football field, and I was marveling all the time. So my point is, how can you possibly believe in what you're selling if you don't love it yourself? You know, you love your food at True Food Kitchen, right? Thank God, <laughs> you know, like that's, that's it. And, and I've been on the side where you have to talk about something that um, maybe you don't really believe in. And I can't go to the, you know, the heads of movie studios or brands or whatever and convincingly ask for the things that I ask for if I don't believe in it like a billion percent. So being a fan of whatever you're doing, be a fan, that was huge, I mean, for me. I love it. I love it. Um, we had a chat, it was probably a year ago or so, and you talked about how you've, over the last several years, uh, gotten into investing more. And was, there was a tipping point, wasn't there? Kind of a moment where you're like, hey, wait, there's another way to do this. Um, can you talk a little bit about how, A, that process, um, and then maybe some of the women that you represent, let's talk Eva and her business uh, her area of business and what she's doing right now. Uh, but first on the investing side, what, what was the, the trigger for you to be like, 
head tilt. I'm going to start getting more involved over here. The trigger was I kept, I would just be places at, at people's homes and I go, this is amazing. Wait a minute. What does he do for a living? And I'm like, and I meant this like in the coolest way. I'm like, I think, I don't know how to say it properly, but like, I just know what he does and his house shouldn't be this big. <laughs> <laughs> That's the right way to say it. You did great. Is that right? Wait, we're picking up what you're putting down. We're picking up I what mean, you're putting down. <laughs> that was actually, that works perfect, perfect. Right? Yeah. That was good. Yeah. Um, so, I'm like, yeah, so I know, I know. and then maybe like, someone would be like, yeah, he was an angel investor in Uber. I'm like, oh, got it. And then the same thing would happen over again. You know, whatever. You know, Twitter, same thing. Like, God. And I was like, this was like, you know, I'm 48. I just turned 48. And, um, and, but I was like 40 at this time. And I wish I had this happen earlier because the earlier that you can get into the game, as you know, the better long term. And, um, and then I realized, like, wow, proximity is power. Proximity is everything. I've been given a gift to have the occupation that I have that I'm around some of the greatest deal flow you can ever see because of the people that we represent, right? A lot of companies like, like yourselves will approach us before you approach a venture capital fund to get our clients in your business or on your cap table. Makes sense. That's what I would do. And so I was like, wow, there has to be like, so my job's really incredible and I love it, but it's it can be, a, it really means to an end. Like, this is what it's going to be. But there's all these businesses out there that we get to see first. And that's when the light bulb went on for me and I started to mess around uh, in the restaurant business <laughs> and some other things. <laughs> um, so, and, and, and yes, and some other really, really fascinating companies. And, and that's, that's when uh, the investment world, you know, for like the last eight years, for me, outside of my job, I, I paid close attention to. It's cool too if we look at the ecosystems around some of your clients, and let's let's dive into Eva because I'd love for everyone to hear a little bit more. I wasn't as familiar with with her business mind and what she's up to, so it's exciting. But real quick, back on DJ, the ecosystem that's been built around that brand from a business perspective is a blueprint and and is really hasn't been done before, right? So what you've been able to do in terms of products film, TV, media, all, everything in between, sports franchise. Do you see now your other fellow agents saying, hey, what are you doing over there? How teach me how to do this? Because uh, I, it's, a, it's an empire. No, it's a great question. I, listen, I think when we got started, I, I've always been an outcast in the business for the first, you know, I would say for the first 10 years. Yeah, I've always been a renegade. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and, uh, because, and I say that because I just, I just didn't understand why there was this really, at the time, I think it was Sidney Party who said it first. This is, I mean, this is one of the finest actors that has ever that has ever walked. Um, uh, if they can see you Monday through Thursday, they'll never pay to see you Friday and Saturday. I mean, like if you're everywhere, you're not exclusive, and they're never going to go pay to see you in the movie theaters on the weekends. Which, in that time, was absolutely true. And then you know time went on and I just happened to come from such a commercial mindset. I mean, don't get me wrong, I can appreciate a, a, you know, a great independent film, but I really love, I'm in the business because of the movies I grew up on. And so I just didn't understand it. Like I'm thinking like all you were starting to hear about like was, was the world being smaller than it actually is. And I was looking for an iPhone, but you know, you were gonna be watching everything on on your phone, right? You're, you're gonna be emailing and speaking and texting and watching your movies and your television, all your content on one of these things. Um, so I'm like, why wouldn't you wanna be famous in Tokyo? <laughs> like, why, why is it not okay for a movie star to be on television too? Or be in a credit card campaign that was global instead of just in Germany? I don't, I, like I really struggled with it. And so I'm like, ah, that's how I'm gonna be different. And so that became my thing. And with Dwayne, he was the prototype. It was like, we found a way to make it okay to be great in every single vertical that you could possibly be in as long as you gave the audience something awesome. Like you take care, you heard it a million times, you take care of the audience first. You take care of your customers first. You take care of the, the people 
first and you take care of the companies that pay you to do it, right? Um, and so that's when we started to venture into reality television. You were around for that. It was the, the hero, I think, was the first show and, and the wake up call um, because we wanted to show a side of him that I knew that nobody else had got to see at the time, which was this motivating, awesome, positive, super hero in a real world instead of just only seeing what he did as a wrestler or the movie characters that he played. And that parlayed into starring in another television show called Ballers. And then people are like, wow, movie stars doing television, oh my gosh. And now look, you can't find a television show that doesn't have somebody who is a movie star. And then it became, let's get into businesses. And Eva, you know, yeah, you let's talk. talk yeah, let's talk about Eva. So uh, let's bookmark that for a second. One thing I really appreciate about you, Brad, is that, and I say this often, and it pisses some people off, but it's true. You send a lot of my mentors have been ma men, right? They send the elevator down, get your butt in, you go up, and you send it back down, and that's how we scale elevating women. Um, as we continue to do this. And you've been doing this all your your life, and with with me, you've been a huge advocate from day one, thank you. I wouldn't be here right now, you know, without that type of support. Not true. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, and when people see Renegade, sometimes they think, oh, it's a women empowerment group, yeah. And we're just like, no, not really. We are not rah-rah, we're not, you know, girl power. So much of our discussion this last, these last two days has been around the bridge with men and how we do bring men into and have to and will continue to our businesses and our discussions and we want that. Uh, but that's not always the case. And so how do we find and create more of you? What has to happen <laughs> for more men to be open to, you know what I mean? It's, it's not a trick question. It's, it's true. Well, I, I don't have the answer to that. Darn not a scientist, it. but here's here's what I, here's Drove what I'll all say. The way here. Here's what I'll say. I think here's what I learned. Um, Ronda Rousey, who I've represented, also for like 10, 10 years. And I when I met Ronda, she was you guys. If you don't know, okay, good. Um, you know, like, <laughs> um, she was virtually homeless when I when I met her. She was living out of her car. Famous. She's made in 1987 Honda Civic with like one working window and no air conditioning. And, um, and I spotted her on an episode of The Ultimate Fighter where she was a, a guest. And I, um, I was like, who is this girl? Ultimate Fighter is a show, it's like American Idol for, uh, mixed, for the UFC. So they would have a bunch of contestants all living in a house and then they would all have you know, fights against each other and then whoever won the show got a contract to be in the UFC. She was a guest on it because one of her training partners when she was growing up doing judo was a contestant on the show and they had her walk through and I'm like, look at her. I called my wife over, I'm like, look at this woman. All these guys are giving her so much respect. It's so great, this is amazing. Wow, what a smile. My wife's like, she has amazing hair. I was like, yeah, she does. And, <laughs> and I'm like, who is that? And I'm like, Ronda Rousey, Ronda Rousey. And her, I remember the name, she was a local girl from LA, Venice Beach. And, and you know, I grew up in LA too. And I remember when she won the, the medal in the Olympics. She was the first uh, American to ever medal. She won a bronze. Um, and so. I went, I, I tracked her down through Dana White and we met and I got to go on literally the greatest journey that I think I've gone on uh, professionally in my career with her. And what I learned to answer your question is I learned that the rules are different for women and I hated it. And, um, and I, and I just, I just, I don't understand how if Serena Williams would get, would scream at a line judge, right? She would be, ostracized in the media, but this kid, Nick Kyrgios, who's famous now, who I love to watch play, by the way, can smash his rackets, you know, every match or throw a water bottle off the back wall and like the audience gets a kick out of it. Rhonda wouldn't touch gloves with somebody because she genuinely didn't like her and she's the worst word that you can say about a woman. But if other male fighters do the same thing, it just seemed like, oh, they don't like each other very much. Like, wow. And so I saw the fight and I watched the fight that she went on to be first. And so I don't know about sending elevators. I love the saying. I've you always loved find the saying. You find a new analogy. But it's like fine. I've felt, always felt like for you, like when I met you, I'm like, hop on this moving sidewalk with me, girl. Like, I need you. That's like you. I, I didn't understand 
like what <laughs> I didn't I didn't know about social media. I couldn't fit 124 letters in a freaking tweet. It wasn't I 124. I, t- <laughs> I talked too much, That's okay. you know. Um, <laughs> and so, and how does it work? And then she's like, you know, there's algorithms, and I'm like, what? And like, yeah, you can make people see tweets all over the world if you do it at a certain time. And I'm like, what? And then like, yeah, we're riding together. And so, and and then and then you know, and then I learned about how you post and what it means, and 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 how you can make a post feel like, you know, 300 million people are all getting it at once and they know that 299, 999,000 other people are getting it, but they feel like they're the only ones who are getting it, right? And that was like- What's he at now? What's, what's DJ? Oh, he's like over 300, but like, but all these, million. you know, Addison Rae's at 45, Shay Mitchell who, you know, she's a 36 and, and it matters. And so anyway, so the rules are different. That's, that's the yeah. first time I've heard a man say that. And well, they are. And, it's, yeah. and, and by the way, I think, thankfully, they're getting, you know, starting to tilt the scales back, the, you know, in a, in a more even direction. And, and a, there's a lot of people working. And there are a lot of men like me, by the way. There's a lot of oh, men. Oh, there are. Absolutely. Like we me, just you need know, more. Um, I didn't mean it like, there are. I was just like. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah? How many? Are. Where are I they? Know, you Where know, are they? Um, and <laughs> I just think that. I think for me, it's been a little bit more of I've, I've been in it. And until you're in it, you can't change somebody until they have the opportunity to like be a part of it. So um, so that's all. And, and I think that there's been some amazingly resilient, awesome, strong women that I've got to, to be around, Evelyn Longoria being one of them. And, um, and so I get to learn a lot. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. Hi, everyone. If you are digging this podcast, please do us a favor and subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes. It just takes a moment, and it means a ton to us. So, and I love this. So Brad was telling me about Eva and some of her friends, and they have, like, this investment circle, and they've been swapping tips and whatever over the years. And so tell us a little bit more about that. And I'm looking at Sloan right now, too, because we've talked about just how obviously we're, we're interested in wealth creation. <laughs> Who isn't? We do like money. And when it comes to you know, having those opportunities and access, they probably realize, oh, same thing you did. Why don't we start doing this ourselves as well? How, did that, how does that form? How does that execute like, do, and what, from what you've witnessed? Just curiosity and a group of people, you know, um, I, one of the things I say about the group of, of people that I work with in my company is uh, like we all pull for each other. Those are a group, you know, like we're happy for each other's success. We want to help each other. And sometimes it's more, um, it's more gratifying when you help somebody else's client get something than you do it even for your, your own. And so I think that that's really what that was. She was, was able to assemble a group of like minded women who have incredible curiosity about business and entrepreneurship and, and what's going on right now, you know, in the world. And they all come together and help each other out, just like what you all are doing. I think it's probably not too dissimilar to this, you know. I love it. She's welcome if you want to. No, right she here. would love this. She's, <laughs> she's such a force. I didn't, I didn't know what I was getting when I, when I got the opportunity to start to work with her. I think that I was a fan. I mean, She's, you know, she's, she's awesome. But I didn't, I didn't know everything. Was I was chasing her for like two years to try to sign her. And it got to the point where I was like, come on. I mean, what hell? Like, come on already. Like, let's go. And, and, then, uh, and then I remember at one point I almost like threw in the towel. I was like, if they, I can't. It's why won't she sign with me already? And then, uh, and then I got the call that she was ready to meet and, 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 and we signed her. And it's like, I tell her all the time. She's just the most dynamic, awesome, so hardworking. I, there's like three of her. It's, I've never seen anything like it. Like the only person I think has more, like Anderson Cooper, like, you know, he's just everywhere. I'm like, ah, it's not even physically possible. She's like that. And, um, and she's so smart and she is so aware of, of, of who she is and what she means to something. Um, she has a new show coming that you guys are all gonna love. I don't know if you've been watching on CNN, um, Searching for Italy. 
with Stanley Tucci. It's beautiful. So she's doing the Searching for Mexico one that's going to come in the fall. And I've seen a couple episodes. It's just beautiful. But it's just, she's like effortless. She's just this, um, you know, she's, she's awesome. But her business acumen, her tequila, it's called Casa del Sol, is wonderful. And she's got a whole line of cookware that's coming out. Um, and she's just, she does everything you have to do to really, really be great. Amazing. You said something when we got started here about out, you talked about passion and grind. How do you, and you do grind, Brad works extremely hard. We all do too. How do you reconcile that with your health, uh, mental health, physical health? I mean, the stress and the pressure that everyone's under at all times uh, is something that we're constantly learning about and staying curious on how to evolve and w what does that look like for you to not outgrind like overgrind well i think like all of us i've definitely been there with the over overgrinding i think that if for the handful of things that came out of the pandemic that are positive mental health uh and taking care of yourself is something i think has emerged that people are are thinking about a lot more I've always really believed, and I had some incredible mentors, um, in somewhat of a work-life yeah. balance, right? That like, you can still be really successful and be a good person, be a good husband, be a good father, and all those things without just being an animal every second of every day trying to you know, do your job. So I've tried hard to, to, to be good at that, and I think I've been successful there, um, but then, there's things that are just, you really have to take pauses. You know, I, I went through it a couple of years, seven years ago, you know, I had my own just issues with just kind of like anxiety for the first time in my life. I just like, and you don't, I like to say, you don't get a, um, a notification on your iPhone that like a panic attack is coming. Like, you're just like, you know, <laughs> it would be amazing. That, no, would, that be, would be an app. If anybody, you guys got get that, on that, I am so we in. We can sell Let that thing. We can, yeah, um, we got that. <laughs> Um, and so, so, uh, and that was at a time where what, for whatever reason, I feel like I'm so in the minority on this, but like nobody ever told me that as you become more successful, the stakes get higher. I always thought like, well, once you start some success and you get some money and then you can breathe a little bit. And it was, it's so quite the opposite. And everyone's like, yeah, idiot. You didn't know that. I'm like, no, no, <laughs> nobody, nobody shared that with me. And so, so anyway, I discovered meditation. Uh, I think I was one of the first people on the Headspace app, like really, really early on. I had always been practicing, uh, not always, but like for a long time now, uh, mixed martial arts myself. I would started with Muay Thai and then I found Jiu Jitsu along the way, which I think is its own form of, of meditation and just an absolutely uncomfortable gift of a martial art that really its basis is um, to learn how to be comfortable when you're uncomfortable. And so, you know, and that just stems from like something as simple as somebody having you in a chokehold, but you know you're okay. Like, yeah, you have your hand around, your arm around my neck, but I'm cool. I can hang out like this for a little bit. Like, you're not really choking me. And if you can get comfortable enough in that scenario, which you can quickly, by the way, you can learn that. And then what else in your day is tougher than that, right? So that was amazing. And then, and here's where I'm gonna come in, evangelical for you, cold plunging is like the greatest thing that has ever happened. And it's thousands of years old, but I found it. And, um, and, I, and it started last, like Thanksgiving, when they started to get a little colder and I, my pool wasn't heated and it was like 59 degrees, 60 degrees or something like that. And I started with that. You could barely, I could barely, like, I could stay in for like a, like a minute. Then all of a sudden it was two minutes. And then it started to get a little colder, right? The weather got, then it was, you know, 57, whatever. It's cold. That's pretty cold. Like the ocean on, like, the average is like 63. So that's pretty cold. And so I'm like, wow, I really feel amazing at this. I'm like, my body feels great. I have no, like, I have the worst shoulder injuries ever. I'm like, my shoulders feel better. But most importantly, I have like no stress. So then I started looking into it and I bought one a company called thecoldplunge.com. I'm telling you, write it down. There's a lot of them, but that don't set. So this thing plugs into a wall and it's got a refrigeration system and a filter. So you don't have to like get 200 pounds of ice every time you want to fill up a tub and, and do the thing. 
and it's like the bougie cold punch, but I don't care. And, <laughs> and, um, and, so, uh, and so it goes down to 39 degrees. And I do it every day. I can't, I'm supposed to say like four days a week at like 41 degrees now for three minutes. And I'm just telling you, it's an instant, it's just, it's just unbelievable what it does for your, for your mind. Really? Um, and, and I think you can start with cold showers, the same, like you can, you can slowly get yourself there. But let me be very honest, there is not a day that I stand about to get in that thing where I'm not like, I can't do it today. <laughs> I, can't, I can't do it today. And, um, and, and, and it's every time. You never get used to it. You never are like, oh, this is comfortable. It is fucking horrible. It is horrible until you get out. And it's like the greatest thing ever. So, so it's just if I give you nothing today. Coldplunge.com. Start, do it, I'm telling you. There you go. Amazing. Questions for Brad. What do we got? What do we got? Yes, Ashley. Hi. Um, if we had a, someone had a product that they wanted to get in front of one of the people you represent or just someone in the industry, how would they go about that? I have a company will be launching in the cannabis accessory space in Q1 of next year for smart consumption. So just curious how to do that when it relates to some of the celebrities and influencers. Yeah, well. Cat, where's Cat? Say hi, Cat. Cat Petrie works uh, at at Endeavor as well, along with me, and she's in the venture capital group. Um, and they see probably 200 deals or companies like like what you're talking about a month. Um, we'd be happy to to learn more about it. You guys should exchange information, or me, by the way. You can hit me, but that's really that's what she does. Um, there she is, right behind you. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Um, so. Freebird in the last All In podcast talked about how he believes that most companies um, in 30 years, brands will not be brands in Coca-Cola if they do not create in content around influencers, like the Mr. Beast thing that just happened with the burgers. What's your take on that? Well, I, I don't know the companies. I mean, Coke. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. Look, I think Coca Cola is going to be around for, for a while. Um, if, as long as I'm around, it'll be because I still. <laughs> I, do, I love it. <laughs> um, and uh, thank you guys for laughing at all my dumb jokes. This is, it's been so cool. <laughs> we got you. We got <laughs> you. you. I prepped full them. service. I prepped them. Um, and um, so, yeah, I, I think, listen, the audiences now are so savvy. Like, they know when they're being sold to, they, they know. Like, you can't do this anymore. Like you can't, <laughs> it's, it's, it's not enough. They have to know that you love the product too. You use the product, you're into it. You're not just taking a check. Like you are, you are in it. And so influencers have, of course, it's been an incredible rise, whatever you think about it or not. They sell because their fans are super genuine. Like they're, they really believe and, tr and, trust there's so much trust there if you're telling me something is great i'm down I'm, I'm there it used to be simple where you could just be like oh look at that famous person they 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 drink whatever right and now it's you better really do it and so for, our job has been so it's been so um crucial to find ways to organically sell right shay mitchell if you're you know she had a, she has a deal with beyond me and but she's not sitting there saying like let me show you how to you know, make tacos with Beyond Meat. Instead, it's she's filming in her kitchen on her phone and Beyond Meat is like on the counter. It's just there and she's cooking with it. And people are like, oh, she uses Beyond Meat. I'm gonna try that. When the stock of Beyond Meat was like through the roof, right? Well, one of the days it went through the roof was because Kim Kardashian opened up her freezer and there was like a bunch of Beyond Meat in there and the stock went up like nine points that day. So. Content, you hear it all, is, is, is king. How you create content is everything, right? Like what, content is not just content. Just because you film something on your iPhone does not mean it is gonna sell. So the how to and how you do it and make it look are the things, but, but yeah, I, you know, influencers or, or, or people who are, I, I'm starting to get away from the, I just like, I, think, I like the word influential. Like there's influencers and then there's influential, right? Addison Rae went from being an influencer to being influential. And like that difference is is really important to me, you know, and, and I think it's important to to consumers too. 
Love it. Vivian. Hi. Vivian, hey. nice to meet you back. You too. Um, thank you for this talk. Um, I have a show that is cross marketing and it's marrying brands with celebrities to put out positivity into the world, to celebrate um, people that are doing good in the world, it's just the people you don't know. Um, but my question is, along the lines of this, is is it something that a brand coming to a celebrity first, or is it coming from a celebrity to a brand? Because we do it both ways, but what do you think would be the most successful way to get them all on board? I, 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 we see both, right? And again, it comes to, to authenticity. Like, if there's companies out there that we, here's a great example, Onda, which is a tequila soda in a can that Shay Mitchell is a co-founder of, right? And here's how it happened. Ben Anowitz, who Kat works with, came to my office. Shay had just become a client. This was like right before the, the uh, pandemic, like two weeks before the world literally turned off, right? And we were all at home. Uh, she just signed with us. She comes to my office, and Ben comes in, and we have a, it's just the three of us. He's like, so tell me what you, tell me what you like. Tell me what you're into. Are you into tech? Do you, like, what, what technology you use? You know, do you, are you into to spirit? Do you, like, do you drink? She's like, I only drink tequila soda. And he's like, really? She's like, that's the only thing I drink. I won't drink anything else. He's like, wow. That's so interesting. I have, a, I have a, a brand that just approached us. It's a tequila soda in a can. And she's like, there's no way that's good. There's, just a, there's, no, there's no way. And she's so smart. She's like, and if I don't like it, then I can't, I can't possibly, like, you know, there's just no way. He goes, he goes, honestly, he's like, I've tried it. He's like, I don't know. But he's like, I think it's really good. Can I send you some? So we had the company, you know, we, we sent her some. And she called. She's like, this is fucking good. Like, I love it. And I love the packaging and this is amazing and you know, wow. And so we approached the brand and said, this is all Shea Mitchell drinks, tequila soda, and she loves it. And we married the two. So we approached the brand, right? They didn't come to us for her and now she's, you know, she's involved in a major way and has a really meaningful, you know, piece of that company. She creates all of their marketing along with like everything that you see um, she's involved with. And so that was her or us going to some to a brand that we knew was perfect alignment clearly it happens the other way too there's tons of brands that approach us all the time and i don't know which is prefer I, you know i guess the the coolest one is when you can call and say you know like ronda rousey only wore mizuno when she was coming up through judah she wore mizuno geese she won her medal in mizuno and we call mizuno and we're like this is amazing she actually like loves your stuff and then they made a deal with her um, but we get approached all the time and then there's a lot of instances where we get to see great things and we try it out for ourselves uh, and then we can send it to our clients and go, what do you think about this brand? And it happens that way. Amazing. Got a couple more questions back here. Barbara, Sarah Bath. What would you need to see from somebody to want to represent them? So for instance, if I want to be the next Susie Orman, what would you want to see before you would be interested for representation? Yes, be the new Susie Orman. <laughs> yeah, she's... Um, but what I want to see, I, I, again, it would be, I would be wanting to find you, like, hopefully I've seen you and go, I think she's the next Susie Orman. Like, you know, like she's incredible. And so I would want to like see something that struck that core to me again, becoming a fan. A lot of times it's about just kind of at the stage that we're at in our company. We don't break a ton of ta talent where it's like, you know, you just see someone who's never done anything. Although we do it, don't get me wrong. Like it, there's certainly an R and D, you know, R and D is always important and we, and we do. Um, but I'd like to say like, who's she reaching right now? How, like, what's her influence? Like we of course look at all of your so social media platforms and go, wow, look at how many follow people are following her and seem to be so into what she's doing and how's it different than anything we've seen. I always stay away from the next anything. I'm like, you're the first, whatever your name is. What's your name? Barbara. You're the first Barbara, right? <laughs> um, and so, cause I can't, I, I've always, that's kind of, right? Sounds better than being the next anything. Um, so, so anyway, so that's what we're, that's what we're looking for. You know, something, you're providing something that we possibly haven't seen or you do something that we've seen, two clicks to the right different of everybody else we've seen do it. That reminds me of Danica Brescia. You found her, right? Okay, so Danica Brescia is a renegade, right? Can you share how you found? We didn't realize we had you in common until years so down the road. Embarrassing how I found her, but it's awesome at this the same time. This is awesome. So here's what happened. I wanted to learn about uh, paleo diets, going back to you know health and whatever. And so this was like years ago, and I'm just on Instagram and I just hashtag paleo, and all of a sudden pops up this 
hysterical, self-deprecating, awesome, cool, every adjective you could find. I'm like, who just made it so fun to like eat bad food, right? <laughs> and then, uh, and, and I was like, who, this girl's so amazing. And so like, I just started finding things on YouTube and saw she used to like work at In-N-Out Burger. <laughs> and yeah. I'm like, this, this is crazy. And she had like a tiny following at the time. I don't even think she had t maybe like 9,000 followers, but man, I was like, this girl's so cool. And I just DM'd her like a complete <laughs> loser. But I was so, uh, tried to be so proud. I'm like, hi, this is so dumb, but I'm a agent at you know, WME. And honestly, I just want to know about paleo diets, but I think you're hysterical. And she like DM'd me right back. And three days later, she and I were having breakfast together. And we helped her, you know, like she got with IMG models and, and I think and she's had a really successful thing. Danica's so awesome. Like Danica Bryson needed nothing from me. Like you did, like Danica is gonna go do it. Like whatever she feels like doing. I love how Kendra's filming this because we're gonna text it to Danica uh, right now. Hi, Danica. Um, we love you, Danica. You know, um, she's. I haven't she's talked got, to her in a while. I know she had a baby. Ex, lots of X factors, doesn't she? Yeah, and 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 then she goes and starts her model meals and that self care model meals. society and. Yeah, I honestly felt like she doesn't need. She doesn't need me. She's just gonna go. I love be the Danica. DM though. The cold DM. Yeah, I did that. Hey. Yeah, yep. I did that. Did you have a paleo breakfast or did you get waffles? <laughs> yeah, what did you eat? I, I don't remember, but I probably, whatever was the closest thing to not being paleo. <laughs> and that, that, was probably, that was probably what I ate that day. Um, it, yeah, she's, she's, so, she's so cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy for her and everything she's got going on in life. Amazing. Emily, hey, and we'll wrap up here in a second. And your, let's talk about Kara too. I mean, well, yeah, it's all, let, let me be super clear. It's all thanks to my wife. She's a professional. She, she has her own uh, luxury travel business that she started from scratch, you know, 12 years ago. She was in the magazine business, publishing, ad sales. And, um, but she just like was obsessed with travel. The way I would come home and watch Sports Center, she would be on a computer planning trips that nobody, we weren't even going on. She was like, <laughs> <laughs> and and then and and then she found her way and built like an unbelievable business. And I always like with her, you know, uh, because we have twins who are now eleven. I was like, listen, you don't have to work another day in your life if you don't want to, or work, just love it, right? And so she she built like an extraordinary business. We have a deal, and and, and our house does not run without her. Like I was, we were, we were joking about it the other day because the kids went back to school. And then, like, she's, like, filling out lunch things and tutors and planning, you know, field. It's, like, it's just insane. Like, I, I can't do that. Now, the work life, like, here's the promise we made. Like, my job keeps me out a lot, right? Like, you, there's a lot of dinners, drinks, and things like that. And so sometimes you're not home for dinner, you know, or, or maybe sometimes before the kids even go to bed. Um, I try to keep all that now to a minimum because I... I Got to play. I've been doing it long enough where you can do it, but I'm, I'm out, you know? And so our deal from the minute, the minute those kids came home from the hospital was I got them in the morning, me. There was no, no, no help, nannies, whatever. Like I was gonna get them up. It started with bottles when they were infants to now. Now they, thank God, like dress themselves, but like, <laughs> But, yes, you know, I, I would be getting up with that. them. That you was my wait. time with them. You know, I was going to be with them for those two hours, you know, and now I drive them to school, you know, pretty much every single morning. Um, and that, like, Instagram. had to happen or else there would be no work-life balance. And then I would be that absent, you know, dad maybe. I was really fortunate. My father was incredible, you know. When I was coming, when I was growing up, he was around. He never missed a game. Uh, I think he made his business travel, you know, 
schedules around my baseball games, I'm trying to do the same thing. And so you have to have it. And I was lucky. I had some, some mentors that I could look at and be like, I want to do it like, like he did it. I want to, I'm going to be successful, but I'm gonna be a good dude. You know, all I care about literally people are like, what's your legacy? No, no, no. Here's what it is. Either when I'm like old and out of the business or I'm gone and someone meets Brady and Jackson Slater and they go, Oh, you're Brad Slater's son. They go, yeah. They go, your dad was good. I like, I liked your dad. He was a great guy. I mean, that's it. You know, thanks. That's awesome. That's awesome. I love that you take the mornings. Good for that's well, awesome. Thank yeah. God I'm a morning person. <laughs> you know, I'm up early, so it's easier. But but yeah, yeah, mornings are yeah. It's time to you know, mornings are, are good for me. Okay, a couple of rapid fire questions. When you hear the word renegade, who do you think of? It's clearly, all of you. Um, I just think of, of 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 people who just run through walls and aren't scared of anything. You know, know who they are don't care what everybody thinks, don't care what anybody thinks about something that you believe in. Um, and just, you know, isn't there, like a, isn't there like a Jeep that's called a renegade? Yeah, they came <laughs> after us though. Got it, yeah. but like that's the point, like, right? Yeah, you go up over rocks and around yeah. things or through things, like yeah. that's, that's what it is. Okay. And what keeps you up at night? Violence, racism, just the state of the world, it's so, I just don't. I it, it, I just don't know how it got to the, to be in the place that it is. You know, I can't. I can't. I just can't. Believe, those are the things that keep me up. Like, I, everyone's like, "What's it going to be like for our kids? Can you? What are our kids?" That's you know. Everybody says it, and then like I'm like, "That's actually true." You know, like that's actually true. Like, what? It's what's the world going to be like for Lincoln? What's the world going to be like for my kids who are 11? That you know, when they're 21. And so you know, I try to I try to do my part. You know, to like which is like a grain of sand, of course, but that's what keeps me up at night. I just, I don't, I, I, I hate watching the news. We didn't talk about ARC. Do you want to briefly? Yeah. yeah, okay, absolutely. I know that we have a lot of interest here. So tell us a little bit about the organization, but how you got involved um, and why. So the ARC is anti recidivism Coalition, and uh, it's a really, really special organization that was film founded by um, a friend of mine who's a really successful movie producer uh, named Scott Budnick. He produced movies like Hangover uh, and Just Mercy and, and you know, a bunch of other movies. And it's all about justice reform and helping people who um, either are currently incarcerated or, or have been incarcerated and helping them rehabilitate uh, into society and, and have lives again. So, the way I got into it was because when I was growing up in, in West Los Angeles, uh, I was really fortunate. I was a public school kid and I got to go to school with people who were all different colors and races and religions and, and everything. And so I, and, and it was LA and it was like the nineties, you know, we were talking about it earlier. Uh, you know, it was like during Rodney King. Um, and so I learned a lot during that time and I just, you know, my baseball experience with my teammates was so interesting. My team was like a handful of Jewish kids like me, three or four uh, Mexican kids from South of Pico Boulevard, and a couple, you know, black kids from like Ladera Heights area. And we were all best friends. Best. We'd be sleeping in each other's homes. Our moms would be cooking for each other. If we went out, we went out together. Nobody ever thought that we were different. Like, we never considered color it just didn't matter and to one of my team well, there were two kids that i'd known since i was 10 years old playing little league and um they they were uh they were two of the hispanic kids such good kids such good athletes but didn't have some of the opportunities that you know other people uh grow up with and they you know a lot of us left to go to college i went to arizona a couple of my other teammates went to Michigan, Florida, whatever. And, um, and then uh, we, we would come home in the summers and you would see like something's not right. I think they're running around with the gangs because the pressure from the gangs is, is so heavy. And then uh, I get a call at two in the morning, my junior year, that they went to a party one night, somebody mouthed off, 
Somebody left and grabbed a gun, came back, fired, and somebody died. So they've been in prison for 27 years. Um, they've been in prison longer than they were ever alive out of it. They went in at 19. And um, they did something terrible, right? So I, uh, I went 25 of those 27 years probably thinking about them every day, what life must be like for them, how this you know, possibly happened, how the rules are different once again. And then Scott told me about ARC and then he asked me to, to, to get involved and I joined the board of it. Um, and then that word never popped up again. Now I'm the chairman of the board and we're doing some really, really incredible things. And one of the things that is super important to me um, is that it's really great to take care, you know, try to help people with, with you know, justice reform. And I've met people who have, who have been in prison for a really, really long time for doing some really bad things, but somehow found the power to work on them so much that, believe it or not, they're the most sane people that I speak to all day at this point. But there's also the other side, and it's called victims. You can't do all these incredible things for people who are incarcerated and bring celebrities in to visit them and talk to them and without thinking about the victims families too and so um you know because trust me like celebrities aren't going to visit victims families they're you know or or you know christmas happens to victims and then they look around the table and and their sons are gone or their daughters are gone and so one of the things that arc i've newly instituted is an entire new program for victims families too because it's sensitive you know like as as much as i would love to see my friends go free one day because laws are in place that enable that. Uh, and maybe they shouldn't. They're both well aware that they might both, you know, die in prison and, and that is probably like that could be they might deserve that. You know, I can tell you if it was my child that that happened to, I'd have a real tough time with knowing that anybody ever walked free. I don't care how long they've been in. But these people work on themselves really, really, really hard under some unbelievably poor conditions. And there's some incredible programs that take place in, in some of these prisons that would blow your minds. That like, it's, it's incredible, so. Do your friends know that you're doing your role in the organization? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And, yeah absolutely. That's so, yeah, that's so yeah cool. they totally know, yeah. So, thank you for doing that work. No thank you for being here and sharing your time and wisdom and showing up for, for me for over a decade and showing up for us. Uh, we appreciate you. This is super fun. Thank you guys very much. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Hey everyone, thanks for listening to the show. Hit me up on social media to let me know what you think. I'm at Amy Jo Martin on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And I want to hear your why not now moments so I can share them on the show. Just send me a note to why not now at amyjomartin.com. For show notes and other offers, you can visit amyjomartin.com forward slash why not now. And while you're there, don't forget to sign up for my email newsletter for exclusive content and announcements. A big thanks to Rock Salt Music for all of the tunes by the talented John Coggins. And of course, a hat tip to Richard Gruer for editing and producing the show. I'll see you next time. And until then, why not now?